Okay, this is a flame, natural gas flame, uh, mostly methane coming in. But what are the products of combustion of this flame? Once the gas burns, what, what comes out of it? Well, for the most part there's, by the way, this is a... Uh, a uh, yellow flame because it has no primary air. If, if there had been primary air added into the bottom of this, it would have produced a blue flame. But it is still a clean flame. There is no carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide in this flame, generally. Okay. CO2 is one of the products of combustion. Another product of combustion is water. Now, I don't see any water in this thing, right? That's because that water, I actually did feel a little bit of water there. My hand got just a little bit wet. It's condensed on my hand. The water comes out as steam above the boiling point of water. So, uh, you don't see it or anything like that. Uh, you'll see it in the vents as it comes out of the vents of furnaces. You'll see water vapor coming off. That's, that's actually water vapor, not steam. Uh, steam, you can't see. Okay, and the other product of combustion is heat. The only reason we burn the silly stuff in the first place. Okay. If I'm burning natural gas, and this was the practice for many, many years, I will put a heat exchanger, which will be some sort of sheet metal thing beside this to separate it from the air I'm moving into the house, because I don't want to burn this in my house because it'll burn all the oxygen up and I'll die. Okay, So we have some sort of a separation between the flame. And it's usually a thin sheet metal, and it picks up the heat off this flame. If I want to extract all the heat out of the, out of the flame, uh, this, this thing's burning maybe 12, 1400 degrees. Uh, that's temperature, not BTUs. BTUs is the amount of heat. Okay, uh, I want to get all the heat out of this I could. Then I would drop the temperature of this down to maybe about the same temperature as I have in the house, 70, 80 degrees. So why did furnaces not do this forever? They did it because condensing the, reducing the temperature of that flame that much brings it below the boiling point and it condenses water out of the gas. Okay? It condenses in the heat exchange. Now, you say, well, that's okay. Well, it isn't okay because heat exchangers are usually made out of carbon steel. They'll have, they'll be aluminized or something for corrosion protection, but that's not a good protection against water condensing in the heat exchanger. Why is that? I told you carbon dioxide was one of the products of combustion. Carbon dioxide mixed with water is carbolic acid. It will attack the sheet metal of the heat exchanger. So we don't want to get it that low in the standard uh, heat exchanger. Truth be told, there's a little bit of sulfur in this too, and that would make sulfuric acid, sulfur dioxide, and water make sulfuric acid, which really attacks the, uh, the sheet metal. So, we don't want to condense, do we? But yeah, we do. We'd like to get all the heat out of it. Remember, I'm, I'm producing water with this, but if I'm producing water that steam, it has 970 BTUs per pound in it that I'm throwing away out the vent. So there's a fair amount of 
heat energy in this flame that I'm not getting with what we call the 80% furnace that did not condense water out of the gas. Okay. The actual vent temperature of most of these older furnaces uh, would be around four to 500 degrees because they were making sure they did not condense water. Well, we came up with furnaces that were high efficiency. They were 90 plus percent. Some of these things are 98 percent, 95 percent, very high efficiency furnaces. But they condensed water. So what they did is they put two heat exchangers in these things, and one of the heat exchangers was a standard old 80% aluminized steel. Transfers heat very fast, uh, is a good product for heat exchangers, but it can't deal with water. So we put a secondary heat exchanger in there and made it out of stainless steel. Now stainless steel is a good material for corrosion resistance, because remember, we've got that acid in there, but it's not a real good heat transfer medium. It works, but it's just not as good, so it has to be a little bit bigger to get that, uh, to get the heat out of the gas. So if we use a stainless steel heat exchanger as a secondary heat exchanger, we can condense this gas, end up with a vent temperature almost as low as a structure temperature, 80, 90 degrees. So you've extracted all the heat out. You've complicated your furnace a bit. You gotta have a, a way to get rid of the condensate and uh, add a couple more safeties on it, but you've taken all the heat out of the gas. So if that makes any sense to you, that is the combustion of natural gas and the new heat exchangers. That's it on this one.